What's going on guys, Vlad with eeenthusiast.com here and in today's video we're going to be looking at a very interesting project which was inspired by a Facebook message along with a video of a robot arm which could essentially be taught a specific motion and then the robot arm would repeat the motion in cycles until it is reset or until you teach it a different motion. So I'm going to give you a quick demo. What I have here is a potentiometer hooked up to the Arduino as well as a servo. And as you can see, I can freely move the servo back and forth within a 180 degree um, cycle. And as soon as I press the button, my program starts learning the motion of the servo. So as you can see, I can wave it fast. I can move it really slow. Once I press the button a second time, the servo is going to go into this memory state where it's just going to go back and forth, repeating the same motions that I had done. So as you can see, it's going through the cycles. Uh, every single time until I reset the Arduino and go back to the um, original state. So this is a very cool Arduino potentiometer servo control application and I'm going to be walking you through the hardware as well as all of the software you need in order to implement something like this. And obviously you can expand this uh, at your own leisure. Once you've learned how to do this you can recreate the same uh, robot arm application. Uh, so without any further delay Let's get started. So you'll need a few components for this build. Obviously, you'll need your Arduino. You will need a breadboard along with a push button, a pull down resistor. This can be anything from 10K and up. In my case, I believe this is a 22K uh, resistor and I'm using a 470 microfarad capacitor in order to debounce in hardware. So I'm also going to be using a potentiometer. This is a 20K uh, kilo ohm variable potentiometer a servo motor so this is a very cheap servo motor you can get a more powerful one if you desire to do so and obviously a lot of jumper cables so without any further delay let's uh take a look at the actual assembly so the first thing i like to do is break out the power power rails of the arduino so obviously we take the five volts and break it out onto the breadboard similarly the ground bus is going to go on our second rail we will follow up with the potentiometer so the potentiometer essentially acts as a analog input into the arduino and all i'm doing is creating a voltage divider between the lowest point and the highest point of the potentiometer so let's use a white cable for the uh, middle pin which is going to be going to a zero on the arduino so white cable to a zero and then like i said this is going to be the midpoint and one side of the potentiometer is going to be pulled up to high one side is going to be pulled down to low like so so one goes to the high rail one goes to the ground next is our servo so I am going to land one of the pins on an empty slot on the breadboard and then I'm going to be landing ground and 5 volts accordingly. What I'm also going to need is obviously the servo control pin that's going to an analog or PWM output pin so that's pin number 11. And lastly let's take the input of the button so right now as you can see it's being pulled down to the ground i'm using pin 12 for the button so the blue cable is going to pin 12 on the arduino and in the case that the button is pressed this is going to go high so i'm going to need to put the second cable of the button to the high rail so as you can see, my circuit is very well color coded. Hopefully you can follow. I'm going to post a schematic on my website. So you will have the link in the description. So make sure to check it out. But that's pretty much the build that we're going to be using for this project. So let's go through the software I have written for this application. On the first line, as you can see, I'm including the servo.h Arduino library. So this is telling the compiler that I'm going to be using the functions within that library. I create a new servo one. On the next line, I have an int analog out as well as a new analog out set to zero. These are used to read the value from the potentiometer. The button is on pin 12, as I showed you earlier on the hardware. The state as well as the last state are stored in an integer as a zero. This can be also created as a Boolean. The storage array, which currently has 800 ints stored in it, 
is initialized in order to store the value at each uh, time recording essentially for the position of the servo. You have the storage location set to zero. So this is used as sort of a pointer for the array. The recording is essentially a counter of for the number of button presses that we're going to be seeing in the program. So the void setup function is going to have a serial.begin9600. I used this per purely for troubleshooting purposes. I don't believe it's still used in the logic as of right now. I'm declaring a servo one that attach on pin 11. So this tells the library that I am having a servo on that particular pin. Pin mode for the button is an input. So next we have the main loop function. The first uh, check that I'm doing is a digital read on the button. So I'm checking for the state. If the state that I've just read is different than the last state, so meaning they're both initialized at zero and now this one is at one, I execute the following logic. So it is if the state is high, I'm going to add one to the recording. And if recording is equal to two, I am going to uh, essentially jump uh, and set 777 at the current storage location. This So this is going to be done in order to seal the um, the sweep of the servo, so to speak. So if we're not go going through all of the 800 elements inside of the array, we will have a certain endpoint, which is going to be indicated by the 777. It could be indicated by anything else as long as it is an integer, as long as you can identify it within your array. Close of the function, close of the function. I'm using a 50 second, sorry, 50 millisecond delay. And last, outside of that whole big function, I set the last state to the current state in order to keep track of the toggling. So if you hold down the button, it's not going to keep toggling. This is a reapplication of the code from the Arduino library. Next, we have if no presses have been done. So this is the initial state. As you remember, I'm just going back and forth with the servo. So I read the analog pin from the potentiometer. That's the middle pin on our uh, breadboard. So the new analog out is equal to a map sensor value 0, 10, 23 to 0, 180. So what I'm doing here is essentially uh, checking the analog value, which is going to be from 0 to 1023, going to 0, 180, which is going to be the degrees of the servo sweep that I'm going to be using throughout the rest of the application. So analog read returns you a value from 0 to 1023 if you're reading uh, directly through an analog read instruction. If so, I'm checking if the absolute difference between the new analog out and analog out is greater than two. This is done purely for debouncing purposes because the analog read tends to fluctuate up and down a little bit. So if you essentially give it a little buffer, then it's not going to be jumping as much. I'm going to set servo one that right to analog out. So this is just sending the information from the potentiometer into the servo as an analog out. And then the analog out is set to the new analog out again. This is done purely for debouncing quote unquote of the servo itself. Closing both of those functions have a delay of one millisecond. Uh, next we have if recording is equal to one. So that means one uh, you have pressed the button once recording is set to one. If storage location is smaller than 1000, this can actually be changed to 800. As you can see, I've reduced the size of my array above the storage at the storage location is equal to the new analog out. So what I'm doing is essentially recording the current position at the um, array position. I'm giving it a delay of 100 milliseconds and then I'm doing a serial print line of storage storage location. So I'm just printing out the new analog output to my console. Once again, this was done purely for debugging purposes. And then I'm incrementing the storage location. So if you haven't caught what I'm doing here is essentially I, every 100 milliseconds, what I'm doing is I'm recording the position of the servo. So the current position into this array, which is called storage and I'm incrementing the storage location by one. So essentially it creates chunks of 100 millisecond 
uh, instructions. So every 100 milliseconds, I memorize the servo position. And if recording is greater than one, so that means two and above, so you can keep, you can keep clicking the button, it's gonna go two, three, four, five. This is what is going to happen. This is gonna essentially go into an infinite loop. So while one is equal to one, this is just creating an infinite loop inside of Arduino. The storage location goes back to zero. So this is sweeping through the storage array essentially. And if storage location is smaller than 800, let me quickly correct that code, or so on or instruction storage of storage location is not equal to 777. So again, as I had explained to you, uh, it's either going to go through all 800 elements of that array, or it's going to stop at 777. So imagine if you want to stop within, I don't know, three seconds while your whole recording could last up to um, for example, 30 seconds, then you can press the button, store the 77 in your array, and then essentially sweep only up to this 777. Uh, so yeah, it's going to write servo one dot, servo one dot write storage, storage location, and then give it a delay of 100 milliseconds. So again, going back through the same array that we've stored in uh, up here in the logic, sweeping through it every 100 milliseconds. So that's pretty much the whole program. As I mentioned earlier, you're going to have access through this through my website, I'm going to post a link to my GitHub page, which is going to contain this whole code. I know a lot of you have been requesting code for the previous files. Let's verify the program. It's already loaded on the Arduino, but let's do a quick demonstration. So let's take a look at the demo of the program. One quick uh, note is that I ended up removing the capacitor. This was actually used on the rails instead of the button. It is too large of a value for this particular application, but I didn't have any debouncing issues with the button, so it should be working fine for you as well. But let's uh, take a look at the servo in the first state of the program. So as you can see, I can control it back and forth, sweeping 180 degrees. If I press the button, I go into the learning state, as I mentioned, so I can create any sort of motion. Let's do a very slow sweep back and forth. Once I press the button a second time, the servo is going to go into its routine and it's going to keep doing this for the rest of its lifetime or until you press the reset button on the Arduino. So let's go through it once again, press the reset, wait a second. As you can see, I can freely control the servo. So I have absolutely no obstructions. Once I press the button, I can teach it any kind of motion that I want. So let's do a very small jitter and then a sweep all the way back and quick sweep back again, press the button. Let's take a look. So that's our very short jitter, short sweep, and should be a faster sweep. There we go. And the servo is going to repeat that motion over and over again. So as I mentioned earlier, you can do a lot of applications with something like this, you can create a robot arm with three or more servos and have it essentially learn the positions based on your inputs. And hopefully that's one of the projects that I would be uh, very uh, willing to work on. So that's something that I'm going to showcase probably in one of the latest videos. Like I've said, all of the code is going to be available on my GitHub as well as my website. And I'm going to be showing some more photos of this project on my website. So make sure to visit, make sure to subscribe, leave me some comments. If you want me to showcase specific projects, if you want me to reverse engineer something. And thank you guys for watching and supporting my channel. Thanks. Bye.